So, I have my friend with me on stage here. I don't feel this much as it's me moderating uh, this session that it is us having a conversation. We'll so, find out about that. Yeah, we'll find. Yes. Normally, people don't ask me to moderate because I talk too much. So, yes, you know that. Um, so, just a bit of background for those of you who are not that uh, into Danish politics. What I'm, the guy I'm sitting with on stage today, is our future prime minister. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was hoping for it. no. Um, so, uh, but but just a bit of background of on our relations. The first time we met each other, me and Jacob, was actually uh, back on the 2nd of May, yes. 2018. Yes. It was the day where we both became ministers. Jacob didn't know me. I didn't know Jacob. I know knew of you, and you knew of me because you've exactly. been watching Dragons Den. But, uh, but this was in the Prime Minister's office, because we both got a call from the Prime Minister the night before. Do you want to become a minister? You got that call, I got that call. You became minister for environment. And we don't know how many else got the call. And no, exactly. No. <laughs> but, um, and and, and there we was. And then, uh, and then we've been following each other, uh, you know, uh, since, uh, since then. Uh, first, as uh, sitting next to each other in the, in the parliament as uh, the two most junior uh, ministers in, in, in the cabinet. Uh, the disadvantage was that we had to sit, I had to sit on the other side of Jacob, and I'm deaf on my right ear, and Jacob is deaf on his, uh, on his uh, left ear, so, and we love to gossip about, you know, anyone in politics. <laughs> so that was a bit, uh, you know, um, complicated sometimes. It, at least it gave some good pictures of us sitting like we were going like, to, like this, to, yes. to uh, involve in each other on a, a and, very different level. And then, uh, and then uh, you know, after the election, we didn't continue in government. So we both, you, you continued as, as member of parliament as you were bef before becoming a minister. I was not member of parliament before coming minister, uh, becoming a minister, but I became member of parliament then. Yes, you did. And then two months then, later. No, no, no. Then first two months later, you became my boss because you became the chairman for, for Winston. So now you are my boss. And then you left. And then I left. <laughs> and then I left politics. So I left politics like a, a, a year ago, more or less exactly a, a, a year ago. Exactly a year ago. Yeah. And, um, and how, you know, Jakob, do you miss have you, do, How do, have you been since? How do you, feel, how do you feel about that? Do you miss me? You left me. Yeah, I left you. You left me standing there, uh, yes. which is a, a, a dreadful thing to do in politics. Um, we, we had a very good conversation on you leaving politics because it was with, uh, with a heavy heart. I have to say that you came and said, I don't want to do this anymore. I cannot do this anymore. I think, well, I feel that I'm able to contribute to a better world in another place. Um, and, and I could hear what you were saying. And I was, uh, I was very sad that Tommy was uh, leaving politics because I think that he brought something into politics that we needed. We needed someone who had the background you had. We needed someone who was there and not trained for politics. I've been in politics for 10 years, uh, which is not my entire life, uh, to say the least. Um, I had a job before, which is a very rare thing. I even had a career uh, before joining politics. Um, and, and we need more people from the outside who have, who have had experiences, who have had a life uh, before joining politics. And you had that quality uh, about you. And, and it was very obvious to, to many people, this guy does not need to be in politics. He is, uh, I mean, politics, it's show business for ugly people, and you're a handsome man. <laughs> uh, so you didn't need it that way. And, and, and you, you, you had your, your life working out very well. So it wasn't self-realization or whatever you call it that made you but, go but, into but Jacob, politics. Enough for the compliments. So we, but we needed you then. <laughs> yeah, but, and, but, and but I, you, were and also, I understand. you were also disappointed, right? But it, I was disappointed. Because you feel that I, I quit. Yes. Yeah. It's not something I feel, Tommy. You well, did quit. I did quit, yeah. Um, but, but um, and I understand the reason for it, because one, one of the things you said is that I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference in a green transition. And, and my words to you were obviously, well, you are our speaker on everything on climate. And, and we need somebody who can think out of the box. We need somebody to, to, to take this uh, to a level where people will be listening to our politics. And you said, yes, but I can make a bigger difference on the outside. And I understand this, but it was, and it's a discussion we've had many times since. 
Because is politics, is it the right place if you want to make a difference in the world? Should you go into politics? I guess you say no and I say yes. No, I, I actually don't know. You know, so, so I also have to be honest here. I was actually on stage here at Tech Barbecue a year ago, which, you know, like a month after. There's I, still I, some politician left in you because you have to say when you're honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. No, and I, I, think, I think a lot has happened in the world since I left politics. And I have to be honest, you know, I do respect politics a bit more now than I did when I left. I don't say, you know, after the, you know, the, the terrible war in Ukraine, where we're seeing people uh, fighting for democracy. And I had a lot of people here in Denmark voting for me. And then after I'd been two years in parliament, I just said, I'm out. This is not for me. So, so I have a grain of this. Um, would I have made the same decision if it had been after uh, the, the, the terrible yeah. invasion? And um, maybe I would. But I'm just saying, I have a lot of respect. So this is not, and this is also one of my biggest regrets about leaving politics is that I feel sometimes that too many people then placing a frustration around politics with me yes. and then say, all politicians are stupid. No, that's not my, you know, that was not my point leaving politics. No. My, I had, you know, two key points. One was that I think there's too much focus on the game in politics yes. and too little focus on creating results and creating a better world, yes. less country. And the other one was that on the specific topic of climate, I felt that it was more for me to do being on the outside, working with entrepreneurs, investing in them, than being a speaker. So I had a certain frustration on that specific uh, topic. So let's take the first, because uh, when we had this conversation also after, we've been discussing, is there too much focus on the game in politics? And with the game, I'm, my, you know, my, you know, what I saw was that too often, we want to go over there, but the road to go there is not like, hey, guys, we want to go over there, please follow me. You no, know, the game is like, if we can annoy the government a bit on this yeah. one and then do oh. that, and then internally in the party, we have this discussion, and then one day maybe we might end we, up there. We, we saw it How do you feel about that? I, I think it's horrible because um, I used to be in, in a different world, uh, in the corporate world, where you would... I used to negotiate contracts before I went into politics uh, as a lawyer for uh, first for IBM and then uh, in uh, GN Great Nordic. And I uh, traveled around in the world and negotiated contracts. And the thing is, if you negotiate a contract, you meet with your counterpart and you say, you, you obviously know this, but you say, okay, this is important to me. Please tell me what's important for you. Well, this is important for me. Okay, these two things don't clash. So we can create a bigger value with, with getting what each of us want. That's not how politics work. Because in politics, many times, it's more important for you that your counterpart does not get it his way than that you get it your way. We saw it when we were in government. Uh, Venstre and Liberal Alliance, the Conservative Party, were in government. And it created a dynamic where it was more important for our uh, colleagues in Liberal Alliance and Danish People's Party that the counterpart didn't get their will than going through with their own politics. And that destroyed our government. Um, so, so that thing is a, a disaster in politics because it is destructive. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure what to do about it. No, but, but other than becoming prime minister and then... Uh, okay, only that. But, 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 you, but what we talked about back then when I left was actually uh, that you would also want to change it. I, I think one of the things that I uh, wanted to change when I came into politics was and of course, every time somebody goes into politics, you want to change the world. That's why you do it. Uh, all that you're insane, uh, maybe a combination. But when you go into politics, you really want to change something. And this was, was the thing that I really, really wanted to change. That we had uh, a better focus on, on the task in front of us and less focus on the conflict. And problem is, if you insist on solving the problem, then nobody hears what you're saying. And that's, that's the problem in politics. It's mainly ours. It's our uh, responsibility as uh, politicians. And we often uh, point fingers at the press saying, well, you just want conflict. That's because we give them conflict. Um, and, and we should do something about that. We saw it in the spring when we made uh, a big political agreement in Denmark. 
the national compromise, uh, where we agreed to, to raise the expenditures on uh, defense budgets. We agreed to have a referendum on our opt-out regarding uh, defense in the EU. And we made that agreement within three, four, five days. So it was possible, if you do keep your eye on the ball, and nobody lost any credibility uh, during that period. So it is, it is possible. But do you feel that you know, there's sufficient, and this goes for all the parties, that there's sufficient focus on what you want to do different and how you as a party, as, a, as an individual in politics and as, as a chairman for the biggest opposition party can create a better world versus a lot of focus on how the others are destroying the world or the country? You know, is that well, balance? They, they uh, are destroying the country. No. <laughs> I know you think that, but, no, but the, have, have we found in Danish politics right now, have we found the balance between this is the country I want to create versus, you know, you know bashing, bashing the opponents? I'm not sure that we have the ideal, uh, the ideal balance here. Uh, and, and I think that, that we need more focus on the ball. The thing is, what we started to talk about, where is it that you can actually make a difference? and your frustration on politics um, that, that, that you don't have the focus on the ball, that you have the focus on the conflict all the time, and if you go and work in your new world, which is your old world, then you can actually move things. The problem is you do need politics along the way. Yeah, I know. You do need politics in order to, to set some goals. And the problem is that for the past three, four, five years, we've set very ambitious goals, and we haven't done anything to reach those goals. And that's where we need your help. That's where we need your help. Because as politicians, we can put out, we can set out the frames, we can set out the ambitions and so on, but, but we are not the people who know things. You are the people who know things. I think things. I have opinions. You have knowledge. Mm. And there's a difference. And, and we need to, 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 to put those two together. Uh, and I agree that uh, I don't agree. I think you can also make a difference where you are now. But I think that you also made a difference in politics. So would it actually be okay? I'm just this, this trying to make you feel guilty about yeah, it. <laughs> I, I, can, I, I, I can hear that. Again. So there might be some people out here that think, you know, in terms of now I'm an entrepreneur and I, my, I'm considering joining politics. Uh, so maybe running for parliament. We have a few entrepreneurs actually running for, for, yes. for parliament, uh, you know, in, in the upcoming election. There are some in Venstre, there are some in the Conservative People's Party, there are others out there. When, they, when you think about having, a, then making, making, a, making an entrance into politics, do you have to be there for life in order to have impact? Because that's a bit what it feels, you know, what it looks like. I hope not. No, <laughs> no but seriously, I hope not. Uh, because I'm, I'm not going to spend my entire life in politics. Um, I'm, I mean, I turn 50 next year, hopefully, uh, and, and I'm going to spend some years in politics. Yes, I've been there for 10 years already, and I'm going to be there for, for a period. I, I think the American way uh, of, of politics, uh, where you actually have a job, where you have a career, where you have something in, in your backpack when you enter into politics, and then you are there for a period, and then you leave it again. The current president is, is, uh, is the, well, the exception that confirms the rule, but normally... A lot of luggage. <laughs> well, but normally, you, it, it's not a career for you. No. And, and I think that it should be a lifetime career for less people. Yes, we do have people like Bertel Horter, who has been a member of the parliament for 150 years. <laughs> uh, no, but, but sometimes it, it seems like that, uh, that he has been there forever. He's been there our entire lives. And, and uh, yes, it's, it's good to have that backbone, but, but you need to have a bigger interchange with the politicians and the real life. So if someone out there think about politics, it might be that you go into politics, you get elected. This could be local uh, politics, city council, uh, the regions here. It could be somewhere, in, 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 of course, in, in your own country, if you're not from Denmark. And then it's okay to be there for four years and then leave it's again. It's perfectly okay. And, 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 and there you go. Can you see how I got him to say it's perfectly yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, as long as you don't quit midterm. <laughs> like you did, Tommy. Yes. But, uh, no, but, but I really think that it is okay. That, uh, it's, a, it, it's a privilege that we actually have people who say, I'm going to give some of my uh, precious time on this planet and, and do some politics with it. 
I think it's a, it's a way of doing your duty for community. I'm sorry, but but no, 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 it is. I, that I no, have to say that myself. But uh, no, but but I really think that it's something that you do for the community. It's something that, when I entered politics, it had to do with my children. Uh, that well, I can make a difference. I want to ensure that the world is even better for them, that they have better opportunities than I've had. Uh, and and then I worked for that for for some years, and then uh, back to to uh, earning money again. But but that's also my. Of course, I've been struggling with it because I hate to be a quitter. And I know some of the people inside politics think I'm a quitter. And uh, some of the people that voted for me think I'm a quitter. But, uh, you know, I had my reason. I think it was the right, thing, uh, the right thing to do. But I also left feeling that I actually did make a difference, both as a minister and, and as, 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 as member of parliament on a lot of the climate issues that we were discussing. You and I were together agreeing that we should try to change yep. the opinion inside the party exactly. on the carbon tax. Exactly. And we did change the opinion inside the party exactly. together. Right? And, and, and now the agreement is made because we put pressure on the government. So it is possible. And it's just for those of you that are considering, because you know, we both agree we need more people from the outside to go into politics. And entrepreneurs, they, they, I, they have some, some important opinions and a a important voice in, you have a in the way community. of working that we need yeah. uh, in politics and that we need to be inspired of because what you brought into politics as an entrepreneur was a different way of thinking and i think that was i think that was very beneficial it was beneficial for our uh, group in parliament uh, venstos group in parliament that we actually saw things from another perspective and as you say on the carbon tax not only did we move the party we actually moved also the government eventually. It took some years, but nevertheless, we, we managed to, to, to actually have uh, a majority wanting a, a carbon tax in this country. Yeah. And that was good. Nice. And, it, and we wouldn't have got them, at least not that fast, at least not in that way, uh, without uh, an entrepreneurial uh, brain to help us along the way. So, let's say a month from now, we have had the election, you're the prime minister, you have to figure out who should become a minister in your government. Yeah, and you just will you your call chances. me? <laughs> I'm not. Okay. No, that's not the question. I will call you to let you know who will be the minister who is not you. No, no, um, no. My question is, will you bring in outsiders? So I was so fortunate. I know it was extremely privileged to be able to go straight from the street into becoming a minister. We've, will you? Will you call someone from the outside? Not me, but someone. Maybe <laughs> someone here and ask them to become a minister in your government. If I say yes now, then I get 100 business cards <laughs> afterwards. By the way, call me, yeah. or maybe I don't. Um, the thing is, we've had this conversation a few times before. And as I said to you on, on numerous occasions, if I say I'm going to bring in loads of people from the outside, well, then good luck on having people campaigning for the party. <laughs> yeah. Because, okay. I mean, when, when you do run for parliament, you do so because you want to make a difference and because you have the feeling that you can make a difference yourself. And everybody has that feeling. I mean, whether you are a socialist, a liberal, a conservative, whatever, then, then you believe that you can make that difference. And if I say I'm going to bring in somebody else because you guys can't make a difference, then I have a problem. So uh, let's see. There That's might be someone from it. You know, I Sorry, have the, guys, I was trying to... Uh, and you know I have the list in pencil back yeah, home. So, I know. Uh, I know. Uh, Okay, um, let's jump to, uh, you know, the difference, uh, you know, on, on let's, let's talk a bit more climate here. Yeah. Do you feel that in politics, you know, do you feel overall that we are doing enough? Okay, no one think that, right? No, no, no. But in politics... No, no, but the trouble is that nobody thinks we are doing enough, and then what are we doing about it? Exactly. Uh, and, and as I talked about before, we are, we're setting very ambitious goals, and some may think, well, they're not nearly ambitious enough, no, but when you compare to basically every other country in this world, then they are quite ambitious. And they should be. But we also should start delivering on them. And I think one of the mistakes that we do as, as politicians is to think that we have the solutions. No, we don't. We set down the framework because that needs to be democratically uh, sanctioned. Sanctioned. Thank you. Sanctionized is a nice word. <laughs> Not English, but no. It needs to be sanctioned somehow. And we need to set that frame, but we need to stop once we set that frame. We don't need to pick the winner. 
We need somebody else to pick the winner because if we could do that, then we would be doing something else because that was your reasoning that I'm better on the other side of the fence. So we need to call somebody like you, somebody like you and say, we need to reach these goals. Please tell us how. And whether to do that in a competition or like the X Prize or something like that, that that's one way to do it. But, but we need to let, let the entrepreneurial spirits tell us how to do this. That's also what, you know, in what, what I've seen in politics is it's much easier to convince people if, if, you know, if you can paint a clear picture of what it looks like, right? Yes. The politi you know, it's very hard to say, you know, we have this future, it will be much better, but we don't know exactly how it will look like. So the more we can do as entrepreneurs, that's at least how I think about it, and say that, look, we created 500 new jobs at Green Hydrogen Systems in Colling. Yeah. Maybe we can create 50,000 new jobs by, and not being afraid of losing 200 jobs up in Olbo. Maybe that's, you know, to paint a much better hope, right? Yeah. So the more we can show that it's possible to create new technologies that also have a real impact, new type of uh, food uh, and, and entire value chains for, uh, in the food uh, sector, yeah. then it's also easier for you as a politician, for you as the prime minister to say, hey, we want to go over there because you can see that it's both jobs and maybe, and, and better. I think one of, one of the things that we've been discussing a lot as well is uh, <clears throat> I used to be the Minister for Environment and Food, uh, and the food production is a big sinner when it comes to the climate. Yes. So the solution is for people to stop eating? Probably not. Um, we saw years ago, uh, you, had, you had the uh, clothing industry in, uh, in the middle of Jutland, in Herning, uh, where all the Danish clothes were, were made. And uh, they moved the production to Bangladesh and other places. We're not wearing less clothes. We're not, we've not stopped using fast fashion. Uh, and it's probably not more sustainable now than it was when it was made in Herning. So the, the solution is not to move our food production to other countries. It is to, to refine it in Denmark, to make it better in Denmark. And to accept that, yes, we do eat less meat in Denmark, and that is good. But overall, in the world, it's not the case. So we need to produce this in a better, more sustainable way. And we need somebody from the outside to tell us how to do this. And if we, if we just push it out, then we leave the responsibility to some, somebody else who are not very good at it. So we need to, to, to make this combination of responsible decisions from the politicians, but also an, an entrepreneurial uh, way of thinking about this. Yeah, and, and, but I, I also think that what we need, and that's not always that clear in the debate around, you know, I'm, you know personally, I'm happy that we continue to, you know, do, you know, make a lot of food in Denmark, but some of that food has to be made very, very differently and not based on animals compared to what we're doing, what we're doing today. Agreed. And some of the frustration there is that the level, there's not a level playing field, right? Because if you have a novel food that has not been tested for 20 years, then you can call the food authorities and then you can get an approval for like two years. And no one wants to invest in a company that only has an approval to put a, a product in market for two years. So there's still a number of things just, you know, advice to do for, on. For that, the political side. Yeah, yeah, where, where the political framework really has to change to say, we are completely indifferent to whether it's this or that. And that's actually what you're doing with the carbon tax. You're actually yeah. saying, we want to punish the old stuff, the black stuff, in order to make create a level playing field for the green stuff, right? Exactly. And we need to do that in, in, more, in more areas. And the less, the less specific we are as politicians, the more possibilities yeah, sure. we actually open up for. So I believe Jacob, we're, all, right. we're almost running out of time. Uh, we should of time. have been talking about talent and yeah, capital yeah, 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 yeah. and culture. And <laughs> we customers. agreed to talk a bit about politics and then a lot about you know, the, you know, the key words for how to create a better uh, entrepreneurial world in Denmark. You know, I was going to, to talk about my wife as an entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. and, uh, yeah. But access to talent, access to capital and, uh, and access to customers. So just, uh, you know, I think we have a few minutes left. I'm just looking at, uh, do we have a few minutes left? We were two minutes left. Okay. Will you uh, make it easier to recruit foreign talent to Denmark? Yes. Okay, good. Next question. No, will you lower but capital I, gains tax? Yes, I will absolutely do that. I, I think, I think no, nope, the problem is if we compare ourselves to, uh, to Sweden, we have some obvious flaws here because we are fairly compatible, uh, compatible to, to Sweden, but they have, I mean, 
the level of investment there is substantially larger. Uh, the level of uh, IPOs is very much larger in Sweden. We see this tendency, if you grow to a certain size in Denmark, you move out because you cannot, uh, you, you cannot grow any further here. We need to change that and we need the lighthouses to change that. Because once we have the lighthouses, you represent some of them, Pleo is another of them. We have the lighthouses where you see the spin-offs, where you see a culture of entrepreneurs that, that spin off in other companies and in other areas. And we desperately need that if we are to grow this. And of course, capital is one thing, but talent is definitely another. And it's too difficult today. We, we have this uh, science researcher uh, tax uh, um, scheme where you can... So, so can, a discount on the tax. So if you're yeah. a foreigner, you can come to Denmark and only pay 25%. But the level of taxation is, is, or the level of uh, salary you have to make is yeah. very high. Yeah. And for many startups, well, what, what you need is young talent who are not very far in their career, but are filled with ideas. They are young. They are here for three, four, five years. They're not going to be any burden on our welfare. They, are going to, uh, they don't have any children. They don't get old. They don't get sick. They're here for three years. Why should they pay the full tax? I mean, we need to yeah. think about this. How do we attract these people in a way that is also sustainable from, from a, an economic point of view? Cool. I can see now that the time is up uh, for us. Jacob, it was uh, great uh, having you on, on, on stage here. And you gave some very specific promises to the uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs in the room here. But also to those of you who are considering joining uh, politics, could be with Jacob, could be with, uh, with other parties please do consider that and don't follow me out of politics, follow me into politics. <laughs> and, uh, you know, please, you know, maybe also support this guy. And thanks for, uh, for having me here. And, and, and let me repeat what Thomas said. If you feel that uh, I can do something uh, politically as well as, uh, as otherwise in this world, do so. Don't be afraid of it. it it's not that tough. It is, but uh, it's worth it. Uh, at least for a period of time. So please do so. And thanks for having me. Cool. Give him a...